Dungeons Dungeons and More Dungeons is the 13th episode of Gravity Falls second season and 33rd overall. In it, Dipper and Ford try bonding over a game, but shenanigans ensue. The episode begins with actually really good continuity. The Michelin Shack is completely trashed from the last couple episodes and is temporarily closed because of it. And the gravity shenanigans are even getting reported on. Mabel eats cheesy boodles, which is a reference to cheesy doodles. I've never had them, but they kind of look like puffed Cheetos. Cash Register says Bill. Ford fights the squid thing, which Dipper immediately recognizes from the journals. You see the mayor of Gravity Falls from Northwest Manor. Mabel mirrors the fandom at this point. Dipper finds Dungeons, Dungeons, and more Dungeons, which is a clear parody of Dungeons & Dragons. Due to its inclusion in Stranger Things and how big Baldur's Gate 3 is, I don't think I really need to explain it. But Dungeons & Dungeons & Dungeons is made by Ballway, who also made the pinball game in the bottomless pit. The character simply called Hot Elf is a clear parody of Legolas from Lord of the Rings. Much like everyone, Mabel thinks creating a character is cool, but then Dipper pulls out the phone book of a rule book and gets immediately discouraged. Zeus Fulclarps. Fulclarp is a reference to LARP, live action role playing which is like playing D&D, but in real life, and it's considered probably the most nerdy thing anyone can possibly do. When Dipper falls into the basement, we see a little message on the wall. Zeus was here. Oh man, I think I'm stuck. I like that he writes one of his S's as the cool S. And it turns out Ford's really big into Dungeons, Dungeons, and more Dungeons. This is my favorite game in the whole multiverse! Implying that Fort has been to multiple different dimensions and wasn't just stuck in whatever dimension the portal leads to. You think he met Rick Sanchez? They technically are a connected multiverse. This is the episode where this meme and this meme comes from. A probabilitor the annoying. The old boy looks a bit different than he did back in my day. Mm, yeah, they change the art every few years. Thankfully, you missed the period when the creators of the game tried to make it cooler. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air font to show how 90s it is, and accidentally put a date on the show again. Ford's working on a thing, but no time, he's got an infinity dice. Meanwhile, Mabel and Stan are preparing for the premiere of the new Duck Detective. We got more two liters of pit color than we'll ever need, gummy worms, breadcrumbs and mason jars, popcorn, duck things, and cheddar cheese Pringles. Should also be noted that Dana Terrace will eventually go on to work for the new DuckTales. This is the first major appearance of Grenda without Candy. They originally did consider bringing her in, but I kind of like that they didn't bring her into the episode. Because yeah, Candy and Grenda were introduced together and they're a comedic duo. But I like that the show is willing to split them up sometimes like this. To show that they're not actually joined at the hip. And it adds a little bit of dynamic to the character that maybe Candy doesn't like Duck Detective. And that's okay that not all your friends like the exact same things. Meanwhile, Ford and Dipper took over the living room. We see on their walls, Smurgle, Omadon, and Gorbosh. This is a reference to the forgotten 80s animated film, The Fly of Dragons. This is significant because a character in the film was played by John Ritter, Jason Ritter, aka Dipper's voice actor's father. Oh no, they accidentally roll and they accidentally turn the game to real life. Probabilitor the Annoying is played by the incredible Weird Al Yankovic. The ogres of the episode were directly inspired by the goblins from the Hobbit film, the Rankin-Bass animated version. My middle school showed me it when the first live-action Hobbit came out because I'm that old. Stan squashes a fairy like a fly, much like Zeus did, and I think it was Zeus and the Real Girl or Land Before Swine. The fairy here also says, hey look listen, which is what the character from Ocarina of Time, Navi, infamously said a lot. And probably Pilator wants to eat the smart guy's brains. And to rescue them, Mabel and Stan have to play a game of D and D and D. But thanks to a lucky roll and some gum, they do. Ford locks away the Infinity Die, and turns out that thing he was working on earlier, he somehow dismantled the portal. Well, okay, I guess it's not that weird because it was already smashed. He just had to take out all the power to it. And due to it being opened twice, it's created an interdimensional rift and Ford tasked that Dipper not tell anyone, including Mabel. Originally, this scene was so serious, Dipper actually told Ford his real name of Mason, but it was cut. Mabel Alpha check. She begins the episode wearing a pink sweater with little purple jigsaw puzzles all over. It kind of looks familiar. Maybe I'm just dumb and I can't think of the episode, but it looks familiar. 
her big sleeping shirt, and a detective sweater. Our key is Radmaster. Our code is Excelsior whatever. Which is of course a reference to Stan Lee's catchphrase of Excelsior. Probably could have saved us if they did a superhero episode. Our page is Fun and games are great distractions, but small things can have chain reactions. Which is a good metaphor for the episode. It's just a fun episode with fun Weird Al doing Weird Al things. I love seeing Ford and Dipper bond. Showing that Ford isn't just a strict emotional-less guy, he is a nerd. I love seeing all the nerdy references, especially when the show came out, nerd culture dominated media at the time. But also the episode gets really serious at the end, setting up the dimensional rift, which will be incredibly important for the rest of the show. Overall, this is just a really fun episode. 7.5 out of 10. Do you ever think maybe we're doing this because our lives aren't special enough? That we use fantasy as an escape to avoid the self-improvement we all need? That maybe we should just go out and grow as people? Fortresses can't speak, darling. I'm a fortress! 